Hello, Growing Roots 2 students. Today we'll talk about Shazam monkey fingers. That's when one finger at a time goes down. Why is it important to be able to learn how to do Shazam monkey fingers? Well, playing with one finger at a time will allow us to play faster on the violin. It will also allow us to play smoother on the violin and we'll have better tone. I think a really fun way to get used to doing Shazam monkey fingers is to just do something called walking with your fingers. So I'm gonna hold up my book and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna pretend like they're legs. Here they go. One, two, one, two. I'm using first and second finger to walk with my fingers forward and backward. <laughs> So you can pretend like your fingers are feet and walk around. My book is kind of wobbly, but you could do it on a table or any flat surface. So take a few minutes, stop the video and practice doing some walking fingers with either hand. Now let's review a piece that we don't need Shazam fingers for and that would be a piece that we want to recycle the fingers. We want to leave the fingers down because we need to use them again. So that piece would be a piece like Bedtime for Bush Baby, starting on the D string, Run Pony Run Pony. Bow on the D string, open D is first. Ready, here we go, play. Let's review our new piece, Kangaroo in the Pouch. On this piece, we play it open A, and then we play third finger on A, and we don't really need the other fingers down. So I want you to put down just three. If it's hard for you to get just individual fingers down, you could practice tapping individual fingers. Let's tap finger number one five times. One, two, three, four, Five. Let's tap finger number two alone five times. One, two, three, four, five. And let's tap finger number three. One, two, three, four, five. You could also do this on the shoulder. So let's practice tapping finger number four on the shoulder. Or you could do it on the fingerboard. Tapping finger number four alone. And you could also do things, have fun just plucking the strings with the left hand. There's fourth finger and third finger and second finger and first finger. Kangaroo in the pouch can be played with Shazam monkey fingers. Let's play it first without the accompaniment. We're gonna start with open A, play kangaroo, kangaroo, ready? Go. Kangaroo, kangaroo. Now try just third finger on the A string. Kangaroo, kangaroo. Then over to open E. Kangaroo, kangaroo. And then third finger on E alone. Kangaroo, kangaroo. Now let's review playing by the seaside in the key of D. In playing by the seaside, as you go up the D string, allow the fingers to come off once you're done with them because then we go over to A and we don't need any fingers down on A, 
when we start the A string, but then when you go up the A, leave the fingers down because we come right back to them when we go down the scale. Then when you go over to the D string, Shazam Monkey 3 on the D, and then one finger at a time as you go down. Mississippi Stop Stop on the D string. Ready, go. Now first finger. Second finger, take the one off. Third finger, take two off. Now open A. Now one stays down. Two stays down. Three stays down. Now all the fingers are still down. Repeat the three. Second finger. Ready, go. First finger. Ready, play. Now open A after this. Shazam three on the D string. Ready, go. Set two, lift the three. Just two. Now set one. Ready, go. Open D. How did you do? If that was difficult, be sure and do it as many times as you can. Each time it will get easier, I promise. So please stop the video and try this at least two more times. Let's talk about Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells will start with the note C sharp, its second finger on the A string. I'll play it first and then you play it back. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. Why don't you try second finger C sharp on the A string and play Next, I'm going to add the next note, and I want you to listen to it carefully because I want you to identify if it's a step, stepping note or a skipping note, if it steps or it skips. Okay, so does that note step or skip? Well, let's first talk about whether it goes higher or lower. So do you think this note goes higher? Is that a higher note or a lower note? The next thing to think about is whether it's a step or a skip. So I'm going to sing it. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. Now I'm going to try to play it. Maybe I'm not sure what if it's a stepping note or a skipping note. If it's a step, I'm going to try third finger. If it's a skip, it might be a higher note than that. So I'm going to try third finger, see if that's right. sound right? It should be higher than that. Jingle. So I'm going to try the next note up. That would be E, open E. Let's try that. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. That's the note. Now, it would be helpful to identify whether the next note goes higher or lower. In fact, it goes very low. I think it's bigger than a skip. I think it's a leap. So we need to find that note. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle Oh, that wasn't right. Well, I don't think that was quite low enough. Low, low. Okay, so I'm going to have to find a lower note. not 
quite low enough. Let's try first finger. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all, 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 all. You know, I think it's open A. Let's try open A. to know if the next note is a higher note or a lower note. So I'm going to try a step up. That's the note. And then it goes all the way. Is that a step up? Well, let me try. Yes, it is. If I did a skip, it would sound like this. Or it might sound like this. That doesn't sound right. So it's open A, one on A, two on A. Now I know the first part of Jingle Bells. Now I've written this out in a slideshow for you. Just the first part of Jingle Bells. We'll wait for next time to learn the rest.